I already have the car on jack stand. Here's the jack stand right there. I'm gonna leave the floor jack on for extra backup. I put some wood block right here for extra backup also or for extra protection. The parking brake is all the way up. I put wood block behind the two rear tire. The next thing I'm gonna remove the cap from the master cylinder reservoir. This is where the brake fluid goes into. You don't want to open this for too long because you don't want air to get in. And you always want the brake fluid at least to the at least above the minimum level. The minimum is this line right here. The maximum is up here. When I push the piston from the caliper, when I push it in so I could remove, so I could put in the new pad, the level gonna go up. On the first brake pad, the level might not reach up here, but when I work on the second brake pad, I'm, I'm sure the level gonna reach up. I'm gonna use a C-clamp. One side of the C-clamp gonna be pushing up against the brake pad. The other side of the C-clamp will be pushing against the caliper right right around this area right here where my finger is back here this is the sequence I'll be using the reason for this is I want to push the piston from the caliper back so when I put the new brake pad in I'll have enough room to put it in. This seat can have a button where I could just push it. Push the button and it'll loosen all the way. There's a screw down here. This is the lower caliper bolt. This is the only screw I'll be taking out. There's another screw up here where, where my finger is. This is the banjo bolt. Do not take this screw out. Don't mess with that. The upper banjo bolt, you only remove it if you want to remove the caliper from the car. And because I'm only doing a brake job, I'm only changing the brake pad, I'm only going to remove the lower caliper bolt. To loosen the bolt, it's counterclockwise, but because the screw is on the opposite side of me, I'm going to turn it clockwise.
You gotta be careful when you work like this. If I push it too hard and the bolt break loose, I could hurt myself by hitting my hand on this wooden block. So always be careful when you're working on your on cars. I don't have much leverage, so I'm gonna get a a cheater bar. I can't swing hard and it might hit the wooden block. The next thing you want to do is just push this out. I'm going to get the caliper out of the way. Push it up and push it back. There's a rubber boot right here so you want to try not to damage it. There's like a pan right here, the pan goes in here and you don't want to hang the caliper by the hose you could damage the hose so I'm going to use this hook right here and hook it right there I got some 3M silicone paste right here I'm going to put some of these silicone onto the caliper slider pan right there if you don't have the silicone paste that I have right here you don't really need to put any on it's a good idea to put it on but it's not required I'm just doing this to prevent the caliper from getting stuck And I'm going to put some on the lower caliper bolt also. You don't want to use grease on this bolt because grease will eat up the boot. There's a rubber boot right here. And there's also a rubber boot next to the lower caliber bolt. So 3M silicone, I recommend that. If I didn't do this in the future, there's a possibility this pan will become rusted and it'll like it'll get stuck and then I could have a breaking problem. I'm gonna take out the old brake pad. And now I'm gonna compare the old pad with the new pad. There's the old brake pad right there, the new one. It's a good idea to match it together, make sure they're the same.
that right there. That's the um, that thing right there. That's the indicator if the brake gun wear out or not. Once the pad wear out, and once this this thing right here, once the indicator the tip of the indicator start touching the rotor you're gonna hear a squeak and that's that means it's time to get a new brake pad well I've seen these wear indicator breaking off before so if they do break off you're not gonna hear any squeak probably not until the entire brake pad wear out and your rotor is touching this side of the pad. This is the new brake pad. On the new one, the pad is the brake pad. There's still some space be until it reached the indicator. The old one, the in it almost reached, it's almost there at the indicator, but not yet. I got some brake and caliber grease right here. I'm gonna put it on the new brake pad. This is where the pad is, you wanna make sure you put it on this side. Do not put the grease on this side. This is the side that touches the roller. You want to put the grease on the opposite side. This is just to prevent squeaking sound. I gotta put the brake pad onto the car. I got print the other side of the brake pad. You want to make sure it you put it right. Start with the top and then make sure the bottom click. I didn't get all the way in, but I, I did fix this when we went in. See this? This is the pad. This is the, the pad on the inside, the pad on the outside. You want to make sure it aligns with the rotor right there. Both pads are aligned with the rotor, so everything is good. I'm gonna put the caliper back. I don't think it's gonna go right back in. But I'm gonna try. Yeah, it's not gonna go in because the, the, I need to push the piston back. I'm gonna use the old brake pad. This is the old brake pad. I'll use this to help me push the piston. I was checking if this is on camera or not because 
I want to make sure the camera is facing, facing this part. And now I can clean up the seat pan. Still not going in. I'm gonna push it some more. Now I gotta put the lower caliber bolt back in. I gotta get my torque wrench. And I'll tighten up the bolt. If I read the book right, the recommended foot pound for the lower caliber bolt is 20 foot pound. But I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 22 foot pound. If you don't have a torque wrench like this one, just don't tighten it too much, but make sure it's tightening it enough that the lower color bolt won't, won't come off. Tighten it enough where it won't come off. Use your best judgment. I finished the installation for the passenger side brake pad. For the driver's side, everything is the same. But don't forget to check the, don't forget to keep checking the master cylinder. Make sure it doesn't overflow. And you want to always make sure it doesn't 
go below the minimum line. If your master cylinder overflow with brake fluid, I recommend using these to suck it out. I finished the, the installation of the brake pad a few hours ago. There's one thing I forgot to mention. The brake pad without the wear indicator, it goes towards the outside of the car. And the brake pad with the wear indicator on it, it goes toward the inside of the car. My recommendation is before you push on the gas pedal or before you accelerate the car, make sure the brakes are working properly. And the car I was working on is a 1999 Honda Civic DX. If you're having any problem or need help with the installation of your brake pad, I hope this video helped you. Thank you for watching.